Hi Larissa, and let's break down your sketches and animations. So you did great work this week, and everything seems pretty good. I don't have a lot to say about sketches, as most of them are quite well done. Uh, in some places we could push it a little bit further. So here it seems a little bit too symmetrical in a sense. So this mass is kind of like this, and it's kind of repeating here. So we can push that even more to make stronger, more interesting variation of the form. We're basically pushing this kind of wave-like shape even more. Because this part seems a little bit too weak in terms of design. Something like this. And here we can emphasize that. And overall for this kind of smoke we can add more shadows to make it more volumetric, to add more volume to this kind of smoke. So for example, this bigger batch of smoke can cast shadow on the lower layer or the other way around if you want. And so on. This way we can make it seem even more three-dimensional. Cast shadow all the way here. And you see, it becomes more volumetric. Because the shadow is bigger, it means that the volume is bigger there. So we don't have to keep this kind of light and shadow shape as one big connected shape, but rather treat it as a combination of different uh, of shapes of different size. And there will be a bigger sized shape, smaller shapes, and so on. And that way we can show the volume better and it will look a little bit more like a dense kind of smoke. And of course we can experiment with the shapes, make it more complex. It just depends on the style that we want to make it. Uh, same thing here. It's a little bit too repetitive in places. So you see it goes like... Like a row of elements and every row is kind of very symmetrical. And I guess I remember some sort of reference that was for this mode. Let me check it. And as I remember, it was much more dynamic in terms of shapes and sizes of the shapes. So let's check it out. It very much reminds me of Rapparo's style of smoke. Yeah, it's Rapparo. And you can see that it's very asymmetrical in terms of forms at the top. So it kind of has one swoosh, then the bigger shape is here. So it swooshes here. And it's kind of twisting, twisting. It has a twisting motion. And here, 
I've got a bigger shape here and I've got this nice wave whereas here it's kind of very straight so it's nice to have this kind of wave-like motion in this mode So it probably adds that, adds that wave-like motion here and there, add a symmetry in the masses inside the smoke, and so on. Okay. Next one. This one is pretty good. Uh, we can make it um, probably better to start some, from something different here. Usually with when smoke appears and when anything appears quickly it's, it has quite sharp and directional shapes because it has some force and the force is pulling it in a direction. Here we don't have a direction, that's why it seems strange. And the form doesn't just appear in the same form that it'll, it will become. Usually it has more rounded forms, then forms become even more rounded. And then it's strange that you've got this thing dissolving, but the basement, as the bottom part, is kind of static. If the forces are exerting here, then the forces can cannot just ignore this part if it has this kind of forces and it's kind of a cloud of smoke that went up and suddenly exploded then it's probably better to leave that scene up so it goes like one two three I don't know or and then it starts being even more rounded and this mass at the bottom turns into a smoke wisp and comes up and then we can dissolve the top part same thing here uh, the sudden disappearance of the part at the bottom will be too strange. And again here, usually it appears rapidly, in a rapid shape. Then again the shape softens out. Then it becomes wider and softens out even more. We can add some voice, some pose, and then we slowly add more holes and dissolve it at the bottom. Start to break it up into the holes here, break it into particles, and so on. Okay, next one. This one is okay, a little bit sketchy, but that's how the thumbnails usually look like if you're drawing it very quickly. So these ones are quite good. So this mouth is also quite good, a little bit rough around the edges, as you can see. But aside from that, nice mouth. This one seems pretty cool. We can change up the shapes to make it more interesting here and there but overall it looks quite nice so here it's a little bit more uh, so we can push it and at the sense it's moving in some direction because for now it's just a almost straight lines and too much repetition too many repeating shapes here and there
emphasizing that motion and adding more interesting shapes. The same thing here, it's kinda cool, but it's a bit too static, especially at the top. So, oh, and the top is in wrong perspective. So, if it's this kind of smoke, and this is our perspective, then this will be our ellipse, and this will be the perspective and the basement of the smoke at the top. it even rough or pointy at the bottom start making it more asymmetrical And here we can make it more symmetrical, so we can experiment with shapes, with, it, with different sizes of the shapes, and so on. So it doesn't have to be perfectly one, two, cir like circling. We can break up circles, interlock them, combine them, and so on. And perspective, yeah. And hum, there was another one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This one is quite good, I don't have much to say about it. This one is quite good as well. And this one is quite good too. So not much to say about these two. Okay, and we are left with animations. So this one, this is a study, and aside from being a bit too repetitive in shapes at the end, it's quite good. It's a bit rough around the corners, and you probably can make the shapes stand out more. So it's kind of have this flat edge while we have some volume inside of it. So if we have some kind of indication of the volume at the outer edge, it will work even better like this. And the same for other frames. But in terms of spacing, nice, looks good. Probably accept this part here. One, two, three, four, and it suddenly freezes here, and there wasn't a slowdown here. Yeah, here we have a slowdown, and here we don't have a slowdown.
I see it accelerates a bit. One, two, accelerates a bit and this race. So here this part is a bit iffy, is a bit rough. And now the things are okay. So the last one is a bit tricky because here the problem is that the motion is suddenly interrupted. So the pattern of motion at the beginning doesn't match the pattern in the other parts of the animation. First of all, I would probably have a frame where the smoke hasn't yet become a strain of smoke or something like that. So we don't have a frame where the smoke just appeared. And again, the spacing here should be the biggest one because the smoke has just appeared. And you see, we've got a change of direction suddenly. And then again, so it goes one, two, three. And you see, it accelerates, decelerates entirely, accelerates in this direction, and then again, accelerates, the spacing is bigger than this and this, decelerates, and it's kind of strange that the form doesn't change at all. If it's smoke, even if it's a bulky smoke, first of all, bulky smoke doesn't usually turns into this kind of shapes, this billowing, then smoke. And the second scene is that here the smoke retains the shapes way too much. So it kinda has this type of shape for six frames already and it's already strange. And again, decerates, accelerates. Decerates, accelerates. Decerates, accelerates. Same spacing, no slowdown. Sudden slowdown. So we don't have a very clear deceleration. The spacing in the last four frames just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And similar problems with the uh, masses at the bottom. So here the mass barely moves, even though it's the beginning of the animation, it's the part when the force is exerted, but the bottom part doesn't even move. And then it suddenly starts moving, and then it suddenly stops, and then it suddenly accelerates again. So in terms of spacing, it's very unstable. It's basically zero, zero, infinity, zero, infinity. <laughs> and then it stops again. So again. Scanner goes one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Instead of consistently moving. Again, stopped, goes. And we totally lost the motion, the upper motion. So it just rests in one position. Suddenly goes up, goes up. And then for the remaining time of the animation, it just doesn't go up almost at all. So you see the trajectory, the path of the motion is a 90 degree angle. <laughs> and that's not the best sign. <laughs> the same thing here. It suddenly appears, it stops, it stops, it doesn't move, it doesn't move. And it's too static because, well, 
it doesn't move at all for one, two, three, four, five, six, six frames. And then essentially the problem, so the masses at the bottom just doesn't move and when they move they suddenly change the path completely in one frame. And again, this mass, it was going up, then it suddenly goes down, and then it goes up to the right, and that's it, it stops. It suddenly goes up to the right, and then it goes down. So the path of this particle is one, two, three, something like this. Uh, it's a little bit more rounded here, but essentially it's like this, so it doesn't have enough time to slow down and change the direction, it just kind of stops and goes the other way. So let's look. Let's look at this. So, first of all, So, we start with the shape, it becomes bigger, it goes up, changes the angle, becomes wider, becomes wider, wider, and then we have the shape changing, it's the shape, <laughs> and slowing down, and that goes for every shape in the animation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and slow down. Slowly changing and rotating. <clears throat> and the same goes for all the shapes. So that change in directions, more or less progressively, gradually, and that's what we strive for. Uh, so that's probably it for this animation, and wish you good luck. See you.